One of the greatest impacts in my life that Dr. Stanley's made is the way in which he prays. As a deacon in the 1990s, we were able to pray with him on a regular basis. And that meant so much to me as a young 30-year-old to be able to come in and just listen to these older men as well as Dr. Stanley pray. You can't be around my dad for very long and not hear the, th the prayer theme work its way in. It's, it's not one of several themes. It's probably the theme of his life. And um, he's very quick to say, let's pray. Uh, morning, noon, night, lunchtime. Even now when I go to have breakfast with him or lunch with him if we're at his house, he'll say, why don't we spend a few minutes praying? You know, I'll call him up and he'll say, well, I just had a wonderful time with the Lord, or I was just quiet and praying. And that's what I know that he's really listening to God and understands how to hear the voice of God. And what you'll find in all of my dad's studies or offices is a towel rolled up in a spot where he prays. And some of my earliest memories are running out there to the shed to get my dad because it's time for dinner, walking in and seeing him stretched out on the floor, just praying and hearing him, not just watching, but you could hear him praying. What I saw in Dr. Stanley was when I was there on a Saturday at, at Andy's house, just hanging out on a weekend, and I saw Dr. Stanley come through the door and I knew where he'd been. I knew that he'd been away for a solid day and a night with God. And all he came through the door with was a Bible and a huge jug that he had taken water with to be alone with the Lord. People at the church didn't see that. Uh, people watching by television didn't see that. They didn't see a man coming through the door who'd just driven back down from the mountains, who once again, it wasn't the first time he came through the door, it wasn't the only time he came through the door, once again he's coming through the door and I know where he's been. He's been alone with God and with the Word of God before the face of God. And that is an imprint that goes on your heart. Dr. Stanley's emphasis on prayer and his own private relationship with the Lord um, has made a great impact on our family. Um, each of our kids uh, has a, a vibrant relationship with the Lord. And um, I credit Dr. Stanley with a lot of that. When he talks about prayer and preaches on prayer, you know he's a man of prayer. And when he talks about obedience, you know he will obey God and leave the consequences to him. I've never known anybody to be such a prayer warrior as Charles Stanley in my whole life. And that's what he did. That's what we did. I am ministered to constantly with his life and knowing through his life what he means to others as well as me and know that it's truth and that he gets it on his knees. I don't want to just preach great sermons. I don't want to just stand in huge pulpits. I don't want to lead great movements. I want to find the presence of God and the face of God and be on my knees before God because that's where this man came from. That's where this influence comes from. That's where this power comes from. Learning to pray really began kneeling by my bed by my, with my mother and listening to her pray and call my name. I can still hear it. And, um, and then talking to my grandfather about, about prayer as far as he was concerned, I knew it was at the heart of his life. As I look back over these 40 years, the most significant thing to me personally, what I've gained personally is this. If I had to put all the so-called accomplishments on one hand, and my experiences of an intimate, personal relationship of listening and watching him work and meeting my needs and the desires of my heart and answering my prayers and giving me a vision and watching him do the most awesome things, I'd put that above everything else.